So, hey guys, look right here. Do you remember what this part's called? If not, I'll remind you. It begins with a D. This is the dividend. This is the divisor. Good. What will make the divisor zero? That's the question. Put negative two in a little box off to the side. Just what will make that zero? Now you have to make sure your countdown's in order. And if it's not, you put zeros for the missing stuff, which should make sense. If you have nothing of something, you have zero of it. Like that's the amount of it you have. So let's check our countdown. Four, three, two, one, zero. Are we good? Okay. Just thief all the coefficients from the problem. What's the first one? I know it's a little weird because it's not written. Yeah, that's one. One, three, negative two, uh, one, negative one. When you're not allowed a calculator, I'm going to keep the numbers really small for you. You're going to deal with a lot of ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives because without a calculator, got to keep them small. All right, and then what? Bring it down the first number. You can't start the problem until there's something there. And then it is multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add until you get to the end. If you want to just watch for a second and then copy it down, because if you even look away, like these happen very, very fast. Look at negative two times one. Negative two, add that column. What do you get? One. Beautiful. Do it again. It's cyclic. You just do the same thing over and over. Negative two times one. Negative two, add the column. Negative four, do it again. Negative two times negative four, eight, add, you get nine. Negative two times nine, negative 18, add, negative 19. If your numbers start to spiral out of control and you start getting numbers in the hundreds and thousands, you missed a negative somewhere. That's like likely what happened or you just multiplied wrong because I'm not gonna do that to you. Now, how do you write your answer? Because we divided, you wanna start with what? Put one less. We divide it out in x. So instead of x to the fourth, you're going to start with x to the third. x to the third plus x squared minus 4x plus 9. What is that part called? It means with a q. Quotient. Good. This part is called the, you guys remember all the vocabulary, remainder. Even though it's negative, my suggestion is always put plus. I've just learned over the years that that goes better if people just always put plus. And then you just take that number and put it over what? X plus, two. Yep, X plus two, your divisor. What you're basically saying is we were unable to divide that part out. Let's try another one. These do, like people do get quick at these though, because they like multiply, add, multiply, add. You can just start turning them out. Bless you. All right, what makes this zero? Now it is negative one half. Don't be alarmed that it's a fraction. You're going to be okay. Now let's check the countdown. Is it in order? It is not, and you can usually tell by glancing at it that it's too short. What are we missing? Do you see how there's no x to the thirds? We're going to put a zero for that. Is everything else okay, though? Four, two, one, zero. Okay, so it's going to be four, zero, five, negative five, four. And I know that there's a fraction and it's negative. So like double whammy, it's a negative fraction. I get that that's tough. You're still gonna do the exact same thing. It's the same process. Bring the first number down. Here we go. Half of four would be two, but it is gonna be negative two. Negative two. Good. Add the column, negative two. So when you multiply these, negatives are gonna cancel. Half of two is one, add the column, get six. All right, do it again. Negative a half times six. Negative three, add negative eight. One more time, negatives cancel, half of eight, four, add, get eight. Now, whenever it's a fraction that's in there, not the remainder, ignore that. But what do the rest of these all divide by? They all divide by two. It happens because of that two that's in there. So again, not the remainder but we're gonna divide those all by two. It's like reducing a fraction, not like, that's kind of what it is. You're reducing a fraction. If you divide those all by two, what are you gonna get? Two. Yeah, two, or I'll put the X's in in a second. Two. Negative one, three, negative four. And then don't, like the remainder you leave. Like that's just, it's like leftovers. We don't worry about that. All right, and now I am gonna put the X's back in. We're gonna start with one less than we had. So two X to the third, minus one X squared plus three X minus four, and then tack the remainder on at the end. You're saying we were unable to divide that part out. And I wrote really big. I almost like went on to my next problem. This one's long division. Okay, 
if you don't like the long division, I'm kind of in your corner. Some people like it better though. I always get like two or three people in every class. Somebody in my B3 was like, oh, I like this one better. Whatever your opinion is, you still have to be able to do it because there are times when synthetic, this is called synthetic division, won't work. Do you see when you're dividing by something with a squared in it, what would go in the little box? Do you know what I mean? Like there's not any way to figure that out. So you have to do it this way. It is cyclic as well. So once you figure out the process, you just keep doing the same thing over and over. Here we go. Compare the first two. How do I turn an X squared into an X to the fifth? What would you multiply? Good, X to the third. We are all writing this down, right? As a heads up, this is the rest of the unit. All the problems are gonna involve division, every single one of them, get on board. All right, and then you're gonna take that X to the third and distribute it through here. If you don't wanna draw in the little rainbows, that's fine, I know it gets a little bit messy. It will line up perfectly with these. When you distribute that through, you will get X to the fifth and then what? Minus two X to the fourth plus five X cubed. That part's not bad. Here's the step that's tricky. What do you do with that? You subtract it. Give it a hug and subtract. Subtraction is hard because negatives are difficult. They're so easy to lose track of. This is the difficult step. All right, but what's gonna happen to the first column? Yeah, that's gone, that should happen. If that didn't happen, you had a whoopsie somewhere, All right. Now just make sure you subtract. This is two minus negative two. So it's actually plus two, so two plus two, four X to the fourth. Again, you're subtracting. So this is negative two minus five, negative seven. And then what do you do? Yep, bring down the next one, do it all over again. It's just a, it's a cycle. We're gonna do it all over again. You ready? Compare the first two. You have an X squared. You want it to be a four X to the fourth. What do you times by? Four X squared. squared. And then you're gonna take that. I'm not gonna be able to draw in the little rainbows this time, but you're gonna take that, distribute it through here and put it right underneath. It's all gonna line up. So when you distribute that, that'll be four X to the fourth. Oh my gosh, it's the exact same thing as that one. Holy cow. Minus eight X cubed plus, uh, what is that, 20 X squared. Give it a hug, subtract it. That's the hard step is subtraction because negatives are difficult. If you're like, yeah, negatives are hard. Yeah, I'm with you, they are, you're right. So this is actually negative seven plus eight, which would be one X cubed. You can write the one if you want. And this is 15 minus 20, negative five X squared. Bring down the zero X. I don't know why I made that zero. Oh, well, don't discriminate. Zero is a great number. It's the, the value of nothing. All right, do it all over again. Compare the first two. I have an X squared. I want it to be an X cubed. What do I times by? X. Distribute the X through there. It'll give you X cubed minus two X squared plus you plus five X. Give it a hug, subtract it. First column cancels. Do you get how the first column cancels every time and you keep on whittling it down? Like you're making it smaller and smaller and smaller. That's like the idea of like mathematically what's going on here. All right, negatives are hard. This is really negative five. You can just remember it's opposite, All right? Negative five plus two, negative three X squared. And this is zero minus five. So minus five X. Bring down the negative nine. I know you're like, thank goodness, it's the last one. One more time. Good, why are we gonna multiply by negative three? Cause that is correct. Yeah, get it to be the same. Distribute the negative three. That'll be negative three X squared plus six X minus 15. Now, whatever you get here is your remainder will be done. I know you're like, thank God. So this is negative five minus six. Just remember it's opposite. That would be what? Negative 11 X. And this is negative nine plus 15. Is that six? So when you tack that on at the end, I found that it goes best if you just always put plus, it's gonna be that 
negative 11x plus 6 over x squared minus 2x plus 5. I need to have time to actually teach you the stuff for today. I was going to have you do both of these. Um, why don't you guys just try number four? And I will write up number five, and you can check your work with it. But just I'm going to pause the video here. Try number four with like the people around you and see if you can get it, OK? OK, hey, guys, I wrote this one up here. And I'll take a picture of this and post it. Uh, but again, just for the sake of us being able to finish the lesson for today. Oh, did you already work? No, yeah, you're quick. All right, let's go over this one though. What did you put in the little box off to the side? Two, good. All right, we're on our way. Is the countdown in order? No, what are we missing? Fourth, okay, so it should be one, zero, negative two, one, negative seven, two. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, here we go. One, and you guys can just shout out the numbers to me. What's next? Two, 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 Look at all these twos. Love it. You guys just become little correct answer machines, just churning out those correct answers. All right. Now you're going to start with one less. X to the fourth plus 2X cubed plus 2X squared plus 5X plus 3 plus 8 over. I love it. All right, guys, here we go. What we're going to do today is just a continuation of doing that division. So if you are okay with that synthetic division, we're just going to take that one step further. Here's your fundamental theorem of algebra, which you did in algebra two. You'll have to let me know if it seems familiar. The degree of your polynomial equals, and what is the degree again? The degree is like, what? the yeah, the biggest exponent. I call it who's in charge here, okay? The degree equals the number of complex zeros and complex is a word that like scares everybody because it sounds complex it just means the real ones and the imaginary ones together and if you square root a negative you put i in there remember that i remember we took out an i we were separating all of this okay so real quick and yes i put a question like this on the test when you look at number one what's the degree four you're gonna get four answers and i put a question like that on the test like how many answers should you get Four. How about this one? How many answers are we going to get? Four. How about this one? That's the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Let's look at this first one. Go to y equals. I know it's been a while since you've had a calculator. So if you want to follow along with me up here, that's fine. You're going to go to y equals. If there's something in there, clear it out. These are fancy calculators. And you're going to type this equation, look at this cannot be the part that takes forever because I'm down to 20 minutes and I need to be able to like at least get through half of these with you. Okay, so we're going to do 2x to the fourth minus 7x to the third minus 2x squared minus 7x minus four. If you accidentally put the whole thing in the exponent, you will have to clear it and start over. And I guarantee you that you will only do that once because it is a huge pain in the butt. You have to start completely over. You have to hit the right arrow to get down out of the exponent. I'm going to pause the video a second to give everyone a chance to type that in. So here's our graph. You want to hit zoom six. The goal is to find the zeros. Can you look at this and just tell me one of the zeros? You should be able to go, oh, there it is. Do you see this one right here? Four. When you go to your paper, four goes in the little box. We're going to divide it out. This is the coolest thing ever. Listen. Listen, did we do any work to get that? No, we looked at the calculator and we went, look, there it is, okay? And this is so cool and it will work like this on your test. If that's a zero, the remainder will be zero. So you know the answer before you do the question and on your test, if you don't get zero, you know you had a mistake. Like you'll know that you're right. Isn't that so cool? That's so cool. All right, is our countdown in order? Yes, yeah. yeah, so steal all the coefficients. 2, negative 7, negative 2, negative 7, negative 4. Go ahead and find 0. You want to divide that out. Multiply, add, multiply, add. You can compare with those around you, but you should all get 0 at the end, okay? It should be 2, 1, 2, 1, 0. 
Okay, here's the thing. You need to get it down to something that's squared because you can't complete the square unless it's squared. So do you see how we started with to the fourth? If you were to put the x's back in, you would start to the third. We need to divide again because we need to get it down to two. So go back to your graph. Where else? Oh, let me wake this thing up. Where else does this touch the x-axis? It's not quite negative one. It's negative a half. Do you see how it's in between? You seeing that? So put negative a half over here, and we're going to divide again. No, you, uh, hey, listen, I just got the question. We're going to do this four times. No, we only have to do it twice. You just have to get it down to squared. So if we start with four and we divide out twice, that'll get it down to squared. Are you following me? Four minus two is two? Yeah. Okay. So bring down the two. We're going to do it again. Maybe watch me do this one because there's a fraction, and I know that that's scary. Negative a half times two. Not one, but negative one. Good. Add the column. Zero. Anything times zero is zero. Add the column. You get two. Negative a half times two is negative one. Add, you get zero. I always get people that want to do this, like fill in all the rest of the zeros. You can do that. That's not necessary, but people are like, no, I want to put all the zeros in there. And that's like, it must be filled up. Okay, so now we're going to put the x's back. We started to the fourth. We divided out twice, so now we're down to squared. I'm going to write this off to the side. It'll be 2x squared plus no x's. You see what I'm saying? You can write plus 0x, which looks like aux if you want to, plus 2, and we want to set that equal to 0 and continue solving it. Now, I wouldn't complete the square for that because we're missing the middle term entirely. What would you do to keep solving that? Yeah, minus two. Like, just, just solve it. Like, just get x by itself. All right, then what? Divide by two. That'll be negative one. And then, where's my pen? Square root. Now, when you put a square root, you have to put, so it's plus and minus i. Question, how many answers is that? That's two, positive I and negative I. How many are we supposed to have though? Four. So if that's only two answers, what are the other two? It's four and negative a half. Those are your four answers. I'm running out of time. I wanna at least get through the ones in the front. Let's try it again. Go back to your calculator, go to y equals. Now I would not clear it all out. Here's my suggestion. Do you see how this equation is a lot like the one we already did? You can type over what's already there and insert and delete things. Do you see this DEL button? That's delete. So like I can delete that too and then just kind of type over it and change what's there. Or if you don't like that, you can clear it out and start all over too, that's fine. And so that DEL is delete. Do you see how it says INS above that? Does anyone know how to get to the stuff that's above it? Second. You hit second. So if you hit second delete, it'll let you insert something. And again, some people don't like that. That's why they just clear the whole thing out and start all over. And that's fine too. Like whatever is your personal preference. I'm just trying to give you some tricks to like using the calculator. Uh, it is this button right here below clear. I call it a carrot. I think that's in English. It's called a carrot where you're like inserting something into a sentence. I don't know. That's just what I call it. Like carrot. Yeah, X is this button right here right next to alpha. And then you want to hit zoom six because it'll make the window like normal. Yeah, now there's a lot of them there. You want to pick the ones that if you can are exactly on a nice whole number. So do you see one that is exactly on a nice whole number? Negative two. Do you guys see that one right there? Negative two. What's the other one? 
five. Does it matter if you pick negative two first or five first? No, you will end up at the same place at the end. Which one do you want to do first, the negative two or the five? Negative two. All right, put negative two in the little box. Is the countdown in order? Yes, good. Just kind of steal all the numbers. Oops, I didn't space them out very well. Let me do that a little bit more. And hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, this is so cool. What's what's the remainder gonna be? Zero. zero. Like you know that's what it's gonna be because we're finding a zero of the function. So bring down the one, multiply, add, multiply, add until you get to the end. Everybody just be quiet and give everyone a chance to do that. It should be one negative seven nine five zero. Bingo. Is I'm gonna have that on their lottery. It sounds like I'm calling out lottery numbers. All right, now it started to the fourth. If you only divide it out once, that's to the third. We need to get it down to squared. So what did we say the other one was five? All right, do it again. You're gonna get zero again. I'm only gonna have time for one more after this. So I'm picking which other one I wanna do. We'll finish the others next time. We'll use them like as a warm up. Did you get one, negative two, negative one, zero? Mm -hmm. Okay, off to the side, we're gonna put the X's back in. It'll be one X squared minus two X minus one equals zero. It's not gonna factor. So we have to complete the square. So you guys did this on your quiz. We're gonna add over the one, leave a gap, and then you're gonna divide by two and square. So take two, it's kind of weird. Two divided by two would be one squared is one. So we're gonna add one to both sides. What's the matter? Everything? You're gonna be okay. All right, so this will be something squared. What's the something that goes in there? X minus one. Over here, one plus one equals two. See, I keep the numbers little for you. It's not gonna be that bad. Square root, when you put a square root, you have to put plus or minus. Square root of two is just square root of two. That's not gonna split. And then your last step, add the one. One plus and minus square root of two. Here's the thing, that's two answers. How many are we supposed to have? Four, what are the other ones? Good. I'm only gonna have time for one more. Um, so let me just show you, I wanna do um, number five real quick. And for the sake of time, if you just wanna watch me, cause I can type these really quick, I'll just type it in for us. Okay, for number five, Here's our graph. Where does that touch the x-axis? Negative three, put negative three in the little box. Your countdown is in order, so just take all the numbers. The ones that we didn't finish on here, I'll just use those as a warm up for next time. There's no lesson for next time, we're literally just practicing this. It. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, bring down the one. Can you guys shout them out to me? What are What is gonna be the next number? Not three, but negative three. And see, if you miss a negative early on, that's gonna cascade the rest of the way. So be really careful. Negative seven. 21, good. Negative one, three. 87. Times negative three will be negative 261 so that you get zero. Now we started to the fourth. This will only take us down to the third. I need to get it down to squared though. So go back to your graph and at first glance, it's like, well, it doesn't touch the X axis anywhere else. You get to count the negative three. Why? Because what does the graph do there? 
It bounces. It counts twice. It's a twin. Do negative three again. It is cute. Cute little graph, a little bounce. So the bounce is it counts twice. The multiplicity is two. Bring down the one. All right, guys, shout them out to me. What will be our next number? Negative three. Negative 10. Good. Then do it again. This will be 30. 29 times negative three would be, go figure, negative 87. Yeah, you get a calculator. But it'll be zero, I promise. Now put the x's back in. This will be x squared minus 10x plus 29 equals zero. That won't factor. They won't. Like, these won't factor. That's kind of the point, is that it didn't work. <laughs> All right? So we're going to complete the square. Leave a gap, subtract over the 29, and then what do you add to both sides? 25. <laughs> that was a little strange. Yeah, I know, right? So it'll be something squared. What's the something? X minus 5. Uh, was that negative four? Oops, almost there. Square root. When you put a square root, you have to put plus or minus. Wow, that was a horrible square root symbol. I apologize. There we go. That's probably better. So x minus five equals plus and minus. Our square root of four is two, but this will be two i. Good. And then add over the five. Five plus and minus two i. That's two answers. But there should be there should be four. So what are the other two? Negative three and hey, Miss Cole, do I have to write it twice? Yes, because otherwise you won't get the total of four. And my rebuttal to that is if there are two people who are twins, they're both a person, right? Okay, so it does count twice. You have to do it twice. And listen, on delta math, you have to write all of the answers. If you just put this, it will count it as wrong. You have to make sure you put all of them. 